Hello friends, Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. In this video, I want to show you some basics of the filter curve and how to handle different voice frequencies within the filter curve, what those frequencies sound like, and where they're at. I apologize that I only have a screenshot to show you today. I'm not set up right at the moment to video myself, which is probably a good thing. But the important part is that we do have the screenshot here or the screen video here that I'm uh, going to record. So as we get started, I'm going to push R just to start recording. And before I do that, let me come up here and make sure that we're monitoring good. I'm just, uh, Audacity has just seen my audio through the built-in microphone on my MacBook Pro. That's not the audio that you're hearing right now, but it's the audio that Audacity is hearing. So I want to press record and I want to lay down a little bit of audio. And then I want to show you a couple of things about the filter curve EQ. So I'm pressing R. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just another 10 seconds or so, and I'll just talk, and I'll act like I know what I'm talking about, and that will fool everybody, right? So that's probably pretty good right there. So I'm going to press the space bar to stop. And now let's get that whole audio into our screen here so we can see the whole thing. By the way, I'm on Audacity version 3.2.3. .3 .3. So if my screen looks a little bit different than yours does, that's one reason why. The other reason why might be because I'm on a Mac, I'm not on Windows. But the functions in Audacity are the same either way. So now I've got a little piece of audio here that we need to put some equalization on. This question came up in one of the courses that I teach, and so I wanted to do a quick video of it. I looked at my Audacity channel here on YouTube, and I realized that I had never done one specifically for the filter curve EQ. So the next thing that I want to do is duplicate this track. And the reason why I want to duplicate it is because if you're doing destructive editing through Audacity and you've just got one track like this, it's a good idea to duplicate it before you do anything to it. Because remember, in destructive editing, the edits that you make are undoable or unchangeable once you save and close out the program. If you come back and open up the program at a later time, the changes that you made can't be undone. Now, with Audacity's advent of real time effects, that kind of goes by the wayside. But a lot of users are still using the built-in effects in Audacity, and the filter curve EQ is one of those effects. So I'm going to select this entire track, and then I'm going to press Command-D to duplicate it. Again, I'm on a Mac. If you're in Windows, it's Control-D. And then I'm going to solo that bottom track. I'm going to minimize the top track. I'm going to open this up a little bit wider so that we can see it better. And then I'm going to rewind back to the beginning, and let's just play through this and give it a listen. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just another 10 seconds or so, and I'll just talk, and I'll act like I know what I'm talking about, and that will fool everybody, right? So that's probably pretty good right there. So I'm going to press the space bar to stop. That's not very good audio, but I didn't expect it to be using the internal microphone on my mic, or on my laptop, rather. So... At the same time, it's not very good audio, but it's also not really disappointing. So let's make sure we've got everything back in here. And let's select the entire track again. And then let's come up to the effect drop down menu. And under EQ and filters, we'll see our filter curve EQ kind of hiding. And when we bring up the filter curve EQ, it brings up the last filter that I put on there. You know, one of the things that I wish this had, of course, I don't use it that much anymore now that we have real-time effects, but one of the things that I wish it had is the name of the effect that you've got on there. You know, I open this up and I have no idea which effect this was. I've got some presets, but I don't know which preset this was. But I digress. That's just one of my things that I wish this had. If we go back here to presets, you can see that I've got a lot of user presets. There are also some factory presets, which some of those are pretty good. But for right now, I want to just flatten out this curve. And let's talk about this window for just a minute. You'll see the line at the bottom is frequency. It goes from 20 hertz to a little over 20,000 hertz. The hearable range, is hearable a word? It is now. The hearable range of audio is thought to be 20 hertz to 22,050 hertz. That comes from a thing called the Nyquist theorem. And you thought Nyquist was just a plug-in. So this scale goes from 20 hertz to just over 20,000 hertz, which is really high. The left end of this scale is the bass tones. It's the low tones. The right side of this scale is the high tones or the treble tones. And the mid-range right in here is the mid-range. 
This is where most of our voices hang out. Male voices are going to tend, tend to be a little bit on the low side of this range, whereas female voices will be a little bit in the middle to the high end of this range, typically speaking. The really low range here from like 60 cycles on down to 20 cycles, 20 hertz, is really unusable audio. If you've got a furnace running or a fan running or an air conditioner running in the room that you're recording in, it's going to be hanging around down in this area, and so we want to get rid of that. We don't want that present. And also, these high upper tones can sometimes make our audio sound harsh. But in this flattened state, you can see that the green line represents what we're doing with the different frequencies. The line on the left is decibels, or loudness. I can raise a particular frequency or lower a particular frequency a certain amount of dB. And that manipulates my audio to make it sound better. So to start off with, let's come up to some of the presets. Let's look at some factory installed presets at, at first here. And let's look at this 100 Hertz rumble. What 100 Hertz rumble does is it begins to drop off those low frequency tones starting at just above 100 Hertz. So that by the time we get to 100 Hertz, we've lowered our decibels by about 6 dB. And then you can see that all the way down to 20 Hertz, it drops off to basically nothing. This gets rid of a lot of those low tones. Those things that I mentioned that can contribute to low tones like air conditioners, furnaces, fans, and things like that that might be going on in your room. So with this scale selected, let's go ahead and preview this. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... So if you had a set of headphones on or a set of earbuds on and you're in a semi-quiet environment, you heard that background hum. You heard my furnace running in the background. That's just ambient noise that got into my MacBook Pro microphone and you no doubt heard it. This preset that Audacity gives us can also be called a high-pass filter. It filters out the lower frequencies, and it allows the other frequencies to pass unaffected. That's a high-pass filter. Now, if we come back to our presets, let's look at another one here. Let's look at Bass Cut. Bass Cut is a little more aggressive in what it does. At, a, at 300 hertz, it begins to cut our bass tones out completely, down to about 50 dB, at which time it flattens out again. And remember, the low tones are on the left side of this scale. And this starts at 300 hertz, which is really kind of a mid-tone. It's a mid-low tone, if you will. But let's play this and see what it sounds like in comparison to what we listened to a moment ago. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... So that sounded really tinny, didn't it? The advantage to these tones right in here is that if I increase these tones, it can supply a certain amount of richness or quality to my vocal recording, to a point. If I get too carried away with amplifying those frequencies, it can turn my recording into what sounds really muffled or muddy. It can give it a muddy or muffled sound. So I want to be careful with that. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. But right now, let's come back to another preset. Let's go to factory presets once again. And this time, let's look at treble boost. Treble boost is just the opposite of bass boost in here. Treble boost is accentuating those frequencies starting at 4,000 hertz, and it's increasing them to about 9 or 10 dB. So let's give this one a listen. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... And so with that recording, you can really hear the background noise in my room as the, as the uh, heater is running. And those upper tones are accentuated a little, a little bit more. And I'm hearing a little more mouth noise in there because of those high tones being accentuated. Now let's look at another one here. Let's go back into presets and we'll go down to factory presets. And let's look at telephone. You'll see that telephone is really allowing frequencies between 300 hertz and 3000 hertz to pass pretty much unaffected. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why this simulates what you might hear on a telephone. Way back in the olden days, engineers in the Bell Telephone System determined that the frequency range or the frequency bandwidth of a pair of copper wires, a pair of 22 gauge copper wires, 
would pass audio between 300 hertz and 3300 hertz. That was the acceptable band of frequencies that it was determined could be pushed down a pair of 22 gauge copper. And so this filter curve simulates those numbers. So I'm going to click preview and let's listen to this and you'll see it sounds like someone's talking on the telephone. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... All right, so that does sound like a telephone. You'll also notice if you had headphones or earbuds on that that low rumble in my room is gone. It's filtered out because I'm dropping those frequencies off starting at about 300 hertz. So that wasn't really a factor. And then my frequency response is flat from about 500 hertz to just under 3000 hertz. And then, of course, I'm dropping off the high end. So there's not a lot of quality or there's not a lot of richness to this audio, but it does sound like someone talking on a telephone. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this curve out again. And once it's flattened out, let's preview it one more time just to remind ourselves of what it sounds like when there's no EQ attached to it. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... All right, so we're back to our original recording. Now this time, let's, let's create a curve here. Let's create something that will get rid of, first of all, that low rumble that I hear in the background from my uh, heater that's running. You can put audio points on this line. You have complete control over this. If I click once here, it puts an audio point. If I click again here, it puts an audio point. If I click again here, it puts an audio point. If I click again here or anywhere else on the line, it puts an audio point. These are control points that I can use to manipulate the equalization and to create my own preset. So I'm gonna grab this one here on the left and I'm gonna bring it way down here. And I'm going to do it just, just before 60 hertz. And then I'm going to grab the second one that I have. And I'm gonna drop it a little bit here. And then I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna bring it over just a hair. And then I'm gonna bring this one over just a hair. Of course, bringing it over just a hair is a technical term, right? A word of caution when you're making a preset in equalization here using the, using the filter curve, you want to make small incremental changes at first. Now, I did a, an extreme one there because I want to get rid of that rumble that's in the background. But from this point on, we're going to be making small changes to it or small tweaks to it as we move along. Now, let's preview this and let's see how much of that low hertz rumble or that low tone rumble or that bass rumble is out of the recording. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... Okay, so it got rid of some of it, but it didn't get rid of all of it, did it? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move this point. I'm gonna leave it right where it is, pretty much, and I'm just gonna slide it back a little bit. And I'm going to give us a little more of a curve here, a little bit earlier on. And let's bring it around here to just below 100 hertz, or just above 100 hertz. And then I'm gonna slide this one over pretty steep. And let's see what that does in terms of getting rid of that low frequency rumble that I hear in the background. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... Okay, that got rid of some of it. We're probably not going to be able to get rid of all of it without totally demolishing the audio. Again, this gets back to making sure that your initial recording is a good recording. But we can get rid of a little bit more of that. Let's bring this down just a little bit more and bring it to where we're cutting that audio at a little bit higher frequency. Let's bring this one down some. Let's add a point right here. And let's make this a more gradual curve. And then let's add a point here. And let's bring it down a little bit steeper and a little bit steeper. That's pretty much cutting it off right there. But again, I wouldn't do this in the real world. I'm just trying to get rid of that uh, low level tone that's in the background there. So let's listen to this. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... Okay, since this is bad audio to begin with, I think that's about all we're going to be able to do as far as getting rid of that tone. But you'll notice that the rest of the audio sounds kind of boxy, doesn't it? There's not a lot of quality to it. There's not a lot of depth to it. So let's see if we can bring in a little, little higher quality and make the recording sound a little bit richer than it does now. 
And to do that, let's add a couple more uh, points in here. Just a few more control points, maybe put four of them in here. And I'm gonna bring this one back down to the line. And then on these points, again, you wanna go small increments on these. You don't wanna to get too carried away too fast. But I wanna kind of boost these frequencies right here, these mid-tone frequencies from 200 to 500 hertz, which is kind of where my voice likes to hang out. And I'm going to raise this one here just a hair. And I'm gonna bring this one back down. I think it's a little bit too sharp of a peak. Let's leave it right there and let's see if this improves the, uh, the quality of the audio in terms of its richness and that it gets rid of some of that boxiness, you know, where it just sounds flat. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... So that helped some. I want to bring it up just a little bit more because it's bad audio and I want to just kind of get extreme with it here because I want us to understand frequency response. I want us to understand how the filter curve or the graphic EQ or any kind of EQ that you might be using in real time affects the audio that you're working on. And again, we're just concerned right now with these low mid-range frequencies. We haven't done anything with the upper frequencies. We're just kind of hanging right here with these lower frequencies. So let's boost this up a little bit more, get a little bit more aggressive with it, and let's listen to it. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... All right, I think that's probably about as good as we're going to be able to do with that. I think if we do any more, it's going to increase that background noise a little bit more. So let's leave it like that for the moment. And let's turn our attention to the high end or the upper end, to the high frequency tones or the treble tones. So let's put a couple of random control points here just to get us going. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to bring these down a little bit because I'm hearing those mouth sounds still in there pretty good. So I'm gonna roll this off some. And again, I want it to be kind of gradual. Maybe not that gradual. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let's kind of roll this off here and just see what this would sound like right here. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... You know, that's just not good audio and there's not going to be a whole lot that we can do with it. If we get extreme, just to show you the difference in some of these frequencies, and make sure that we understand what we're doing here as far as cutting frequencies. I'm taking 10,000 hertz, which is pretty high, and I'm dropping it almost by 30 dB. I can come to this point here, and I can bring it down as well, and we can make more of a gradual slope here if we want to. And this is going to cut out a lot of our high frequencies, so let's give it a listen. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just So do you see what it's doing to our frequency? Do you see that we've, we've eliminated a lot of that background noise in our low frequencies? We've boosted up some of the mid-low frequencies to give it a little bit more quality. We can't give it a whole lot of more quality because it's bad audio to begin with. And then we've cut those high frequencies to get rid of some of those uh, sounds that can be a little bit annoying. Those mouse sounds have been reduced just by doing this. Now, in the real world, I would never create uh, something that looks like this. I'm doing this just to illustrate for you the differences between these frequencies and what happens when we attenuate them. So let's raise this one back up, shall we? Let's get this back on the line here where it was, and let's put some high-end shelf on here. Let's, let's boost these high frequencies up. Let's get kind of extreme, because I want you to hear the difference. So let's go something kind of like this, and we'll boost up those frequencies, and let's see what this sounds like. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... So we can hear those frequencies, those high frequencies, much more accentuated. It sounds a little bit harsh. And if we get extreme and really boost those up, it'll sound a lot harsher. But I want to make sure that if you're new to EQ in general, I want you to understand what this is doing. I want you to understand how the filter curve works because this question came up recently by someone who was unfamiliar with it. 
And this is just a way to manipulate our audio to make it sound as good as we can. Now let's do something really extreme. Just to make sure that we understand what's going on here with these low tones. I mean, never do this in the real world. Please don't ever do this in the real world. But let's uh, boost up some of these low mid frequencies here. And let's see if we can kind of muddy it up and see what that does. And uh, let's put another point right here. Come on. And we'll kind of bring it up like this. Let's uh, bring our shelf up a little bit more. Maybe we can make it a little bit harsher here. And uh, yeah, why not? Again, don't do this. Don't attempt this at home. But for the sake of this illustration, let's see what this sounds like. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go. So, wow, we've gone from bad to horrible. We've gone from bad to really bad. Did you see how it's clipping? Did you see up here that in our speaker meter toolbar that we're clipping, we're distorting? That's because we increased our loudness so much on both ends of this spectrum. You'll see that at 200 hertz, we raised that frequency up to 24 dB. Man, that's just screaming. That's smoking. In the real world, when we're making small changes to our equalization, any increase in the lower frequencies and the lower tones is going to increase the loudness of your file. So keep that in mind. Before I let you go, let's look at a couple of my own presets. Let's come back over here to presets and let's pick one of these. Here's the preset for my Cinco D2. Let's see what it sounds like. Again, this is for the Cinco D2. It's not for the microphone that I recorded this on. But nonetheless, let's just give it a listen. And now we should be recording. We're laying down a little bit of audio here. We don't need a whole lot. Maybe go just... So it's pleasant. It's not good. It's not a good recording, but it's pleasant. The advantage to creating a preset is that you always have that preset with you. I don't remember when I created this preset, but it's for that Cinco D2 microphone in this room. And so I know any time that I'm using that Cinco D2 microphone in this room, I can bring up this preset as my equalization for that microphone. That microphone tends to enhance the low end, and so I brought the low end down. And then I got rid of that 60 hertz uh, rumble, or those low frequencies below 100 hertz, because in the real world, when I'm recording with my Cinco D2 microphone, I don't have all that background noise. It's a hypercardioid microphone, and it rejects a lot of the noise. So don't be afraid to mess around with the filter curve. Make a piece of audio and experiment with it. If you use different microphones in what you're doing, experiment with creating a filter curve EQ preset for each one of those microphones and name it after the microphone. And once you've saved that preset, you can always recall it and bring it back up and apply it to the microphone that you're using it on without having to reset everything. But keep in mind that the filter curve EQ is destructive. So if I hit apply right now, and it applies that filter curve to that piece of audio, and I save this out and close it, I can't go back and fix it, which is why I duplicated the track at the very beginning. So I have bored you enough with this. I will let you go. I hope that answers some questions about the filter curve EQ. And until next time, you all take care.